Hi everyone, welcome to this morning's version of Monday Morning Musings. You have undoubtedly heard, if you're a Protestant for sure, Protestant or Catholic, the just shall live by faith. That quote of Habakkuk, worked by Luther, is the foundation of Protestantism. It is unfortunate that from middle-aged European scholasticism and earlier, Renaissance humanism, the idea of faith has been defined as intellectual attitude or intellectual adherence to propositional truths. If you've been with me for any time at all, you've, you've listened to the videos, you've seen them, that that's not what the word pistis means, and that's not the way a Jew would understand the word faith. I have encouraged you elsewhere, when you see the word faith in the scriptures, to insert trust, or more importantly, relational trust. Because trust is a social term, it's not possible to have trust in a vacuum, Trust involves another, that another can be God and or, or another human being. The animal kingdom cannot trust, they can be conditioned to trust, but humans, by definition, faith becomes social when you define it as relational trust. And also, where you put your emphasis on that passage is going to determine what you see out of that passage. Watch this. Just, just take the standard evangelical rendering of that passage. The just shall live by faith. Okay. Let's try this. The just shall live by faith. Where's the emphasis? See, on the first way, the emphasis is on perhaps my intellectual posture towards principles from the Bible. The second way I said it is, the essence of my life is derived from my faith. I believe what I'm about to share with you is a very fair, linguistically, biblically, theologically, solid, alternative way to render that passage. Try this. The rectified, what Bultmann would call the right-wise. What happens when a boat is upside down? It's called capsized. When you fix a capsized boat, it's called right-wising the boat. Those who are right-wise, who have been made right, who have been rectified, shall exist by relational trust. That idea of relational trust includes the following. Fidelity, loyalty, allegiance. Those are all broader implications of that verse. And it's really interesting because the context of that verse is when one of, one of God's prophets is meditating on why does wickedness prosper? I look around and I don't see justice. I see injustice. I see the righteous unjustly suffering at the hand of the wicked. Where are you, God? I got to get up to a high mountain. I got. I got to get low. I got to talk to God because what I'm seeing is driving me crazy. And that and and the, and the voice that comes to the prophet and then what Luther quoted is this: the right wise, the righteous, and that's equivalent with justice. Remember one of my other other uh, little videos: righteousness, justice, like a sandwich, two sides of the same coin, can't separate them. The just person will live out of their fidelity to God. I don't buy the Western way that verse is presented abstractly, philosophically, that you can have 
abstract philosophical assent to a propositional a theory and say that you're, quote, justified by faith. When everything in the way of your existence says you live by the account balance in your checkbook and by the passions of your life. So I think it's just one of many things that we need to reconsider. And like for those of us that are in organic church environments or whatever, when I say we need to reconsider doctrine, I'm not talking about you know who does what, when, and where in a meeting, but I think there's some very fundamental doctrines that you and I have embraced that have come from Renaissance humanism through the Reformation that need a second look. And the just, the rectified, shall live, shall exist by relational trust. And that's what he said. I'll see you next time.